Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this short commemorative service for uh, the life and times of Captain Johnny Walker. Frederick John Walker was born in 1896 and joined the Royal College, Royal Naval College in 1909. Serving as a sub-lieutenant in the First World War he went on to become an anti-submarine warfare specialist and served on a number of capital ships in this role. In 1939 with the outbreak of war Walker was assigned as a staff officer operations Admiral Ramsey as part of the Dunkirk evacuation. But he was finally given command of HMS Stork and the 36th Escort Group in 1941. Finally, he had the chance to test his innovative methods against the U-boats in the Atlantic. In January 1942, he was awarded his first DSO for his actions escorting convoy HG-76 and his first bar was added later that year. In 1943, Walker took command of the 2nd Support Group, based in Bootle, having convinced the Commander-in-Chief of Western Approaches of the benefits of these active hunting groups. In September that year, he was made Companion of the Order of the Bar, and a second bar was added to his DSO in February 1944. This was following a successful cruise in which six U-boats were sunk by his group a record at that time. Having been instrumental in the defeat of the U-boats in the Atlantic, Walker and his group were assigned to protect the Normandy invasion fleet as part of the D-Day operation. In a two-week period, no U-boats were able to break that screen and attack the supporting and supplying invasion ships. Following this, he was awarded his third bar to his DSO and was twice mentioned in dispatches. Sadly, on the 7th of July 1944, shortly after his return to Liverpool, he suffered a fatal stroke and died two days later in the Royal Naval Hospital in Seaford. He was aged just 48. His biographer, Terence Robinson, wrote, This ace killer of submarines not only showed what mastery in this art could do, but by example infected all those concerned with him in this business with the same enthusiasm. His death was directly attributable to the overstrain which he suffered in setting that admiral example. And one of his contemporaries, Admiral Sir Alexander Madden, wrote that Walker was a forthright and practical man, full of faith and action in everything he undertook. He was high principled, courageous, modest and a kindly naval officer who looked exactly what he was, an outstanding leader of men. I now hand over to Commodore Waterhouse, Royal Navy, Commanding Officer HMS Eaglet and Regional Commander for the Royal Navy who will read Our friends from the excellent Western Approaches Museum have already covered the career, successes and untimely passing of Captain Frederick John Walker, CB, DSO and three bars, Royal Navy. Captain Johnny Walker was, it is my thesis, the combination of the very best of this great maritime country's naval leaders. I would contend that he is Lord Hawk, Lord Nelson, Lord Collingwood, Lord Beatty, Lord Cunningham and Lord Boyce of his day and should be fated as such. He clearly stood shoulder to shoulder with his intellectual, if not right contemporaries, of Admiral Sir Percy Noble and Admiral Sir Max Horton who commanded the Battle of the Atlantic 
from the Western Strangers headquarters, some quarter of a mile from here. But more of that in a moment. But much like Collingwood and his role in Trafalgar in particular, Walker's contribution to the Battle of the Atlantic is either understated or on occasion absent. This to my mind is a travesty and one that we in the Battle of the Atlantic Memorial Charity and the Western Approaches Museum aim to put right. Thankfully it is something that Liverpool identified as a travesty and allowed this magnificent memorial to be placed in such a telling spot for all to see and to pay their respects to. Walker's genius was many fold. Yes, he was a great leader who inspired his men and the women that supported his men in both logistics and infrastructure terms, but also in family support and love, to deliver way beyond their means, to fight through the horrendous, disgusting nature of the Battle of the Atlantic, and to deliver safely the numerous convoys to the UK and beyond. And yes, he fought the U-boats proactively and had great success again and again in protecting the convoys and his own flotilla. He was afforded hero status as a consequence, not least here in Liverpool, to where he would return to Gladstone Dock and his small house in Bootle. And yes, that hero status has been continued, not least by his Old Boys Association, which is so wonderfully celebrated in Bootle Town Hall as well as this small ceremony every year. But his most enduring legacy is the fact that the Royal Navy still actively utilises the tactics that he devised in the heat of the Battle of the Atlantic. The commanding officer of the Type 45 destroyer over the river in Birkenhead, HMS Dauntless, when engaged in anti-submarine warfare, will deploy plans and procedures originally designed by this man here. And tellingly, other NATO ships and aircraft will be able to join the same engagement and utilise exactly the same tactics seamlessly. Little did I know as a radarman in my earlier career, but I was doing exactly the same when I ordered corpens and zigzag plans and torpedo countermeasures and anti-submarine warfare weapons attacks. However, I never got to order General Chase, another awe-inspiring piece of leadership and command by Walker. So we're here to celebrate a great man who is synonymous with World War II, with the triumph of the Battle of the Atlantic, with the defeat of the U-boat campaign, with the success of the convoy system, and with the delivery of food, stores and ammunition to both the Western and Eastern fronts and to the profile of this wonderful maritime city of ours, Liverpool. But we should also celebrate, and do I see a smile of approval, that he is still contributing to the successes and training of the Royal Navy in 2021, and very likely a long time beyond. Farewell, fair winds and following seas, Captain Johnny, sir. We salute you. The following words were spoken at the funeral of Captain Walker in Liverpool Cathedral on the 12th of July 1944. In the day when the waters had well nigh overwhelmed us, our brother, apprehending the creative power in man, set himself to the task to conquer the malice of the enemy. In our hour of need, he was a doughty protector of them that sailed the seas on our behalf. His heart and mind extended and expanded to the utmost tiring of the body, even unto death that he might discover and operate the means for saving our ships from the treacherous foes.
They shall not grow old as the we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. much to everyone for attending. It's been a real good day and the weather has cooperated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for organising. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Do you? Thank you. Um, run now at five way. Oh, lost so so we're going to put a video on And I just had my last few for Seth this time as well, Bernie Thompson. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.